Welcome to Rooted Cosmic Soul Presents. Transmuting the eye meets alignment time at a local bookstore called Storytime. My name is Deidre, and I'm the designer, diviner, conjurer, channeler for this elemental journey. If you're new here, welcome. Come on in. If you're returning, it's great to fill you again. And I got a little new something, something for you. This is a bit of a spin of what I've been offering at Rooted Cosmic Soul. This is a combination of what I call insight session. Other people might call it a reading plus alignment time. So thinking about spiritual growth, spiritual care, and then also story time. I have a thing for high vibrational storytelling. So let's play a little. Imagine you're listening to this journey or receiving this journey, this insight session, this alignment time at a local small brick and mortar bookstore. It's to choose your own journey, pick an element adventure. So you got four elements to choose from to hear a divine transmutation story. You'll find individual links to the elements of your choice in the description. Interested in more than one journey? Excellent. Do as you please. Multiple journeys are welcomed here. The stories are offered to a collective audience. All may not fit your beautiful, customized, individual experience, and that's okay. Use your discernment, take what supports your path, leave for other ears what does not. You can also just sit and listen to the stories as stories are meant to be listened to. They don't necessarily need to offer you anything other than 15, 20 minutes of a story you've never heard. <laughs> Likely, I've never heard. You'll find individual links to the elemental journey of your choice, in the description. At the end of this video, I also talk about the Oracle decks that I used for the bones of the story, because it's divination. It's a divine story. I have deep appreciation for folks who create these beautiful mediums for us to channel and tell stories and give offerings. So that's at the end. Again, it's timestamped. You'll find it in the description. Coming up, you'll be given an opportunity to look at each of the cards representing the elements. And once you decide, I'll see you at earth, wind, air, and or fire. Fire is an element often associated with the qualities of passion, transformation, creativity, and energy. The planet Mars, Jupiter, and the Sun. Fire signs in the zodiac are Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, gemstones associated with fire, fire opal, red jasper, garnet, ruby, bloodstone. Colors associated with fire, red, orange, Violet and white. What chakra is associated with fire? That would be the solar plexus. The earth element is associated with stability, grounding, fertility, and abundance in many magical systems. The planets Saturn and Venus. Zodiac earth signs are Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Gemstones associated with earth include Hematite, Jasper, Onyx, Amethyst, Jet, Tiger's Eye. Colors associated with Earth, green, brown, black, white, and gold. What chakra is the Earth element associated with? That would be your root chakra. The element air is associated with the qualities of intellect, communication, freedom, and movement. Mercury and Uranus. Air signs in the zodiac include Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. 
gemstones associated with air element, labradorite, topaz, agate, moldavite, celestite. Colors associated with air, yellow and light blue. Air is associated with your heart chakra. The water element is associated with the qualities of fluidity, intuition, emotion, and purification. Neptune, Pluto, and the moon. Water signs in the zodiac are Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, Gemstones, Moonstone, Lapis, Aquamarine, Amazonite, Lazuli, Selenite. The colors blue, silver, aqua, and turquoise. And when we're thinking about the chakra system, it's located at the sacral chakra. Number eight, fire, ignition. Number 15, birth, boom. Number 22, and motion. And number 29, water, creation. Choose your own journey. Welcome. If your journey of choice was fire, you're in the right place. Before we begin this journey story, please know that the crucible for this story is the same as the crucible for air. So if you are having difficulty deciding between fire and or air, fire or air, you might want to check out the air reading as well. This story takes place at night. You're in a temple, surrounded by pillars, and the pillars are whispering, embrace your darkness as mother. You are a shape shifter. You are shape shifting in the heart of a Gobekli Tepe, seeking resurrection you are in a time in the spiral before now, and yet now you are a phoenix rising from the ash, shedding your skin. You are in the arms of death and rebirth. Along this journey, you need time to be reborn. You need stillness and quiet. The divine feminine is offering you knowing and release, because it is when the darkness surrounds us that we come to know ourselves in the light. As you stand at the heart of Gobekli Tepe, seeking resurrection, seeking to be the phoenix that rises from the ash, you stand beneath Sirius the Dog Star, glowing and scorched, whispering above you, Hecate walks with you, goddess of the underworld, illuminating the darkest pathways leading to the crossroads you stand in. Crucible here is stay the path, build consistency in your rituals. Rebirth is barking at the door. Now is the time to listen to the night. It's not about what can be seen. Ask yourself, what is the resonance of this moment? Can I hear Saturn's whispers? Commitment, endurance, steadiness. In this story, you are being asked to engage silence as power. The fire element is asking, what is your relationship to time? You learn to be in the flow and not resistance to the click of the clock as your rebirth nears. 
You're not on this journey alone. The flames are not seeking to burn you. The flames are seeking to show you that in the ether stands Father God offering you radical truth. Where you are from is not the totality of where you are going. In this rebirth, lean into gratitude for what is, not just focusing on what is to be. As your rebirth nears, you continue to walk at night and through pillars, etching twists and turns. Keep walking. Keep moving forward. Be consistent. Remember your commitment, your endurance, your steadiness. Look around. Look around. What is that? That's a rainforest tree, Mitragyna. Rows and rows of Mitragyna offering shape-shifting energy to step up your commitment and endurance into the flames to burn off the illusion of limits. Mitragyna lines the temple halls to assist a resistance to getting lost in a labyrinth of self-doubt. Remember, Abundance to stabilize in the darkness of spirit. Regard slowing down to transmute reactive ways. And cultivate choice through breath and inward clarity. You are being transformed from the inside out. As a human being, release attachments to always moving as a human doing. It is in temporary non-action and in the dream state where you will find the fire within. I find it interesting that fire divined a story that is actually about balancing it out, its light, its illumination, its tendency to move really fast or when we embody fire to think really fast to go 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 it offered us a story that now is a time to slow down to balance its illumination and light with darkness i find that really interesting so i will offer this dear listener the journey that you took if you chose fire Perhaps there is something that is before you at the moment that you're feeling quite impatient about, or you're really pushing, 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 or you're feeling, you can sense that you are on the precipice of something and that you are indeed that phoenix that rises from the ash, but you haven't risen yet. And so it's such a beautiful moment. Like, a lot of times stories are about, you know, the, the beautiful phoenix that rises, but the twists, the turns, the things that happen beneath the fire that actually create that beautiful phoenix are such a part of this story or such a part of your story or part of what's making you, that's creating that phoenix. So I, I feel like this journey is saying, slow down, respect the process. There's so much different energy here supporting you. Nothing that is meant for you will pass you by. And divine timing is a very real thing. So if you have the ability, whenever you start feeling super anxious about whatever project or next steps or next state of being that you are seeking and it's not coming. If you have the ability, I would take a nap. <laughs> I would take a nap and have the intention to let your dreams show you what is to come. And with that, we'll close out. Choose your own journey by our element. 
as above, so below, as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul, so shall it be, so it is. Ashe. My energy stays with me. Your energy stays with you. Unfettered and infinite love and gratitude. Welcome. If you chose to take a journey with Earth, you have arrived. At the get here, I want to say some folks are here coming from a fire journey. Or if you're not coming from there, you may want to consider taking a fire journey after this Earth journey. If you're coming from fire journey, it makes sense to me after divining the journey that you're here. Um, so for the earth journey folks, if you were thinking, ah, I couldn't decide between fire and earth, I would definitely check out the fire journey. As far as earth, the journey offered by the element earth begins at a place that once held mysterious flames rising up from the earth. This is a journey about healing home. Home is in the body, the mind, the heart, and spirit. This is a journey in which earth wants you to seek fire, where it offers spiritual insights for you in this time of need. Earth has a question for you. Did something snuff out your spark? Did something dampen your flame? This Earth-sponsored journey is a journey inward to take steps toward building your inner fire. You see, because Earth really wants you to alchemize the lead of suffering into the gold of creative expression. On this journey, the medicine is found inside the wound. Take the raw materials that line the wound at your feet and make an offering to earth. Turn them into music, song, story, dance, or art. This journey is about your transformation you are the alchemist with the power to transmute pain, grieve, mourn, and give that pain its creative voice. Earth will forever hold you. This elemental journey brought to you by Earth is one in which the Earth really wants to take you on a journey to its core. To see the many layers necessary to create the whole, but such a journey takes time. And in this timeline, time is rushed, made urgent, corrupted. Earth is asking you to be patient on this journey, for coal is not made into a diamond overnight. This desire to take you on a metaphorical journey to the extremely hot inner core is to offer you an analogy of your own inner core or cauldrons. This journey is to help you regulate your most primal and instinctual parts, to coordinate the passion that inspires and moves you, and to find synergy between your spiritual development, interconnectivity, and greater wisdom. This journey Earth is taking you on is to remind you, you are an alchemist able to take the heat and pressure you are feeling and induce sublimation. Change the density of your reality to that of air through service to others. Hold yourself with great compassion and grace while offering others the same. Earth knows you've been through it. And as you engage the journey it offers, she also sends you a circle of goddesses to support your expansion because evolution and revolution is on its way 
lean into Katesh, Nefertiti, Ma'at, Sekhmet, and Isis. Lean into this circle of goddesses by celebrating how far you've come and are going. And yet still, along this journey, you will unearth fear, discover through darkness and break cycles. Earth has called into the journey Pau de Arco, one of its most beautiful trees. Pau de Arco offers synergy with Pluto and the moon. Look up and find strength in the knowing that your journey into the inner flames of Earth is where you will find the sacred, and she's welcoming you in. Fear not this journey move into the deep, dark, feminine, cosmic womb, because the goddess circle is turning the wheel of change so that you are transmuted and alchemized. Love is actualized. Use this to cultivate stability, certainty, and clarity in your authentic self, in your relationship to people, your relationship to place, and your relationship to this planet, to Earth, to your journey maker. Cultivate grace and compassion to see the hidden potentials to your existence. Earth took you on a journey to remember you belong to her and she belongs to you. You fit, you connect, you belong. The pressure you're feeling can be released as you move deeper into alignment with the unconditional love Earth has for you. Whether coal or diamond, you are loved. I really love that Earth took its folks on a journey using other elements, using this idea of fire and air. I think because the sense that I'm getting is that for some of you, if not all of you who chose the earth element, there is definitely some pressure being felt. And maybe for some, it's a little bit more overwhelming than others. But for the folks who are deep in a transformative state, almost like really like you're being, you're, you are being alchemized and transformed and we alchemize and we transform, we transmute. There's also a sense that I get that it could feel like, yes, I'm doing those things, and yet it feels like those things are happening to me, and it is both end, right? It is the both end of those things are true. And I love that Earth is like, yeah, yeah, and we are not alone. Because the, the interesting thing about elements is like, when I was thinking about the elements, Earth, wind, air, fire, well, Earth holds wind, holds fire, holds air, Whereas wind is on earth, right? Fire is on earth, in earth. So just something about that, that always, uh, I, I really appreciate the multi-layered way of being that the earth is. And it's something that reminds me of how I feel as a human and being intersectional with the multiple identities that I hold or that move with me. And so I say all that to say, I really appreciate that earth seemed to offer a journey here to really remind, even if it's just one of you out there, that you have so much support that yes, you are in it and you're doing the work. And don't forget to lean into all the support mechanisms that are around for you, including remembering that you are not alone because it's really clear that you're doing it. <laughs> you are doing it, and you're surrounded by pretty strong ancestor goddesses. You are loved, so keep cultivating stability, certainty, and clarity in the alchemized, transmuted self you are creating. Continue to cultivate grace and compassion from within, from deep within, to really establish an awareness beyond solely where the eyes can perceive there's so much more happening and if anything this was a, a confirmation that yes it is happening even when we can't see it 
So thank you for taking this journey with Earth. I'm going to close it out there. As above, so below. As within, so without. As the universe, so the soul, so shall it be. So it is. Ashe, my energy stays with me. Your energy stays with you. Unfettered and infinite love and gratitude. Welcome. If you have chosen to take a journey with air, you have arrived. Now, before we jump into the story of this journey, a couple things to note. Each element offers a particular crucible within the elemental journey, the story. Air and fire have the same crucible. So if you were trying to figure out whether or not you should do either air or fire, I would consider taking both journeys. And then also, there's lots of twos showing up. There's lots of twos showing up in this journey. Definitely confirmation if what brings you to choose air is something to do about union, relationships, choice, seeking balance. As you'll see from the story journey that air is bringing us, it's a very clear journey. <laughs> so let's jump in. Air, the element of communication and thoughts, begins your journey with a distinct and clear clarity via the channeling of Venus. Air's journey for you begins at the gates of the ancient city of Babylon. Air seeks to take you on a journey that will support your exploration of the relationship you have with yourself and with others. Through Air, Ishtar asks you to remember that the spiritual world is real. It is this life that is the dream. This journey, guided by the shining star of Venus, will help you remember you are pleasure. You are beauty. And within your sexuality is the sacredness and the sensuality of the divine. Now, in true air communication power fashion, air is also bringing in Kuan Yin to share this journey with you asking you to focus on yourself, all the patience, support, and love you give to everyone else. As you take this journey, hold sacred the truth that you are the only you in this entire universe. Hey, you. Look up. As you stand at the gates of Babylon, Sirius is the brightest visible star in the sky. You stand at a crossroads, at the heart of a spiral, past, present, future, all swirling about you. You already know the path to take. Are your steps consistent and reliable? Your path is well lit. Keep building positive habits and rituals. Air offers you the reminder to build consistent sleep and dream rituals. Along your journey, gather lavender, mugwort, sage, hops, and agrimony. Craft a dream pillow. Dreaming is a gateway to communicating with ourselves and others in other realms beyond what one might find in a wakeful state. Crafting your journey, air continues to swirl and flirt with Venus, asking Venusian energy to offer your journey the experience of pleasure, of touch, of sensual delights. 
that may be in human contact, that may be a love affair with Earth, that may be pulling out your paint set. Deepen your relationship with and to divine love, reciprocity, and union. Imagine you are being flown by the owls of Ishtar. This deeper relationship of divine love may feel like you're on an emotional roller coaster. Deep feelings abound. Air wants you to look down, see the earth holding you. Look aside, feel the air rushing you. Look across, see the water flowing, and look inside, feel your flames igniting. This is what a growing empathic and intuitive reality can feel like. Lean into the energy of the hibiscus flower, also known as the root of water. She brings with her the energy of the goddess Atabe, who represents the moon, fertility, love, romance, and beauty. Now is the time to lean into play and creativity. Why not fall in love with yourself? Remember that this journey began and continues at the gates of the ancient city of Babylon. To your left, can you feel that blowing against your leg? The wind is rustling a rosemary bush. As more is communicated to you from those around you, especially in the case of romantic love, stay committed and loyal to your journey to love yourself unconditionally. Call upon Rosemary as a guiding light to see beyond the veil of confusion and stay committed to the vision that moves you. And as air begins to dance with the energy of your heart, forming an infinity symbol with hibiscus flower petals, remember your power to engage boundaries and protections. Own your space, energy, and agency. You are love actualized. Your authentic shine will bring in all the yahoos and the just rights. Shine at your maximum wattage. As your journey comes to an end, airs parting message. Although it may appear you have gone backward, the truth is that you're standing at a higher level, looking down into your circumstances. If and when the thought arrives of, how did I get here again? Remember self-compassion, your dreams, your commitment to yourself. Access the wisdom and lessons learned. See the patterns and release them in the wind, releasing yourself from old cycles, especially when it comes to love relationships. And free yourself, free yourself, free yourself. As this journey ends, so too does the round and round of past patterns. You are alchemized and transmuted. So when I look at the overall journey that Air wanted to take you on, I had to say it's I can't stop smiling. So but I, so I think there's a couple of things happening and I want to make space for all experiences. I think there could be folks who showed up in this moment wanting to hear a message of moving on, some way to feel like the power of motion, the power of air could blow away perhaps some bullshit relationships that are occurring. And I think that there is indeed that message. That message is, is here in terms of reminding you that there's so much divine feminine energy circling for you and supporting you that if that's what you want, so shall it be, right? Make it happen. Remember your power. This is a moment to engage boundaries and protection. So sometimes... It's not so much that the universe will make certain relationships or folks disappear, just poof. No, it's by our actions. It's by pu pulling in the divine masculine of taking action. You've looked inside, you know you want to move beyond that relationship. And so 
Now it's remember your power, that you can engage boundaries and protections and create the space you're looking for for yourself. So I think that's throughout this message. But predominantly, the feeling that I'm getting is that if you arrived here, maybe you are looking for love, you're falling in love. Now, that could be with a person, that could be with a place, <laughs> that could be with your art, that could be with your job. This could be platonic or romantic. I get the feeling it might be a little bit more romantic, but I don't know why. I just said that, but maybe not. But anyway, regardless, there's a lot of energy here that it's coming in. Air is the motion. Air is bringing it in. And what the journey that you've been on, air wants you to remember that you have all the tools, concepts, ideas, the new definitions, the new beliefs, the new behaviors that you need to do relationships differently, to be in relationship with yourself in a more positive aspect, to be in relationship with others in a more balanced, reciprocal way. And that you're going to have to remain consistent with whatever mechanisms you've put into place to create this healing and this growth. Really radiate this idea of self-compassion for yourself because that's going to help the people who are in relationship with you adjust as well. I could go on and on and on about this, but um, I'm not going to. This is a really beautiful reading. Yeah, if this was for an individual, we could easily spend 45 minutes unpacking a lot of this in a really beautiful way. But I'm glad that I had the time that I had. Thank you uh, for bringing your energy, for bringing this message. Thank you. It's just, it's really lovely. I really like the energy that I'm feeling with it. So thank you for those who chose this, for bringing that in. I'm going to close it here. As above, so below. As within, so without. As the universe, so the soul. So it is. So it shall be, Ashe. My energy stays with me. Your energy stays with you. Unfettered and infinite love and gratitude. Hello. If you chose water as your elemental journey, you have arrived. Before I share the journey water is offering you, please note that if you were going back and forth between water and air, based on the stories that have now been divined, I would check out both. The crucible part of both the journeys were grounded in similar energy. And if you were interested in both water and fire, I would check out both as uh, there was sort of like a shape-shifting energy, a uh, liminal energy a here and there, a this and that, that was present in both water and fire journeys. No pressure, it's just an offering. So let us begin your journey. This water journey opens at a lake. You are above the lake. Its ripples shine in the sunlight, making them appear like stars. Look down. See your reflection. Notice that the lapping water shifts your appearance. You are flowing between different states of being and consciousness. Are these shifts into lives of now or lives of the past? As your journey progresses, your embodiment begins to float downward. You find yourself inside a cave, feeling the most at home you've yet felt, so close to nature, your shamanic nature feels nurtured. Water element wants you to rest here. 
work with the spirits here. Honor all elements here. Remember the oldest and the youngest you here. Are you willing to deeply engage the youngest you here on this water journey? Can you twirl with the flow of your most powerful you? This is a journey where we draw on the sand. We step out into the mouth of the cave and yodel just to hear our echoed sound and our subsequent laughter. This journey holds the secret to an enchanted life. That secret is held within the heart of your divine child. The more you allow this journey to let your most playful aspects rise, the more this journey will be that which your deepest self seeks. On this journey, water asks you to journey deeper, to release false notions on time, and let divine timing in. Water has some questions. What is your relationship to patience? Do you bow at the false god of urgency of this timeline? Water says, sometimes good things, big things, take time to form and develop. Look at my parts. The lake that opened this journey is one of the Earth's most ancient. 25 to 30 million years old, Lake Baikal supports thousands of species of plants and animals. Your cave, this cave you stand in, is the shaman's rock, said to be the birthplace of shamanism, a reality that took time. Even within the flowing, watery spiral that time is. So when urgency sets in, water wants to remind you. Your journey is in and of the liminal space between life and death. In patience and flow, you will remember and renew the stories and sorrows that carry us all into the next what is. This journey, held by water, reminds you are the ancestor of tomorrow. Your roots touch the past. Your heart embraces the now. It is only your relationship to land that is the never-ending story. And it will flow as it flows. Water senses you're still feeling impatient about something. Is the force you're wielding producing only agitation? Look to nature. Look outside your cave. Look into the depths of the lake. The lake warns to not fight the flow. Loosen your grip on what you think this journey should look like. And a whole new realm of possibilities will awaken. Water chose this journey for you to offer you the possibility to radically open to what nature has in store for you. Water, in collaboration with fire, offers this journey path access to the altar of fire. The fire tree of the matriarchal Akan people. The fire tree holds the Kra, or life force energy of the supreme being goddess Nayame. Be patient. What goes down must come up. Grow compassion for yourself. Water shifts your attention to the lake. Look more closely at what lines the lake of your journey. Water is growing kava kava for you. Lean into Kava's energy for deep relaxation and increased flow of thoughts. As your journey goes from day to night, look up. It is now the moon's light and Plutonian energy shimmering on the lake's rippling surface. This ebb and flow of the lake's water holds space for your deep transformation within your emotional mind. Kava enters your journey to move through your nervous system like a butterfly, relaxing, widening, and assisting your surrender, your acceptance of divine timing. Water understands 
surrender is easier said than done. That perhaps the question still exists of how does one release impatience and urgency? On this journey, if this is indeed your journey to release impatience and urgency, foster focusing on your North Star. Center integrity. Because centering integrity can create growth, balance, gratitude, commitment, and communication. All things that will help you surrender to divine timing. Cultivate grace and compassion to establish an awareness beyond solely what the eyes perceive. Your journey occurs within a cave alongside a lake, both deeper than the deepest the earth can offer. Your eyes are only perceiving a minuscule amount of what actually is. Water wonders for those who this idea of cultivating a relationship with spirit through grace and compassion falls short, is laughed at, or is simply not understood. The offer here is for you to transmute the false notions impacting your connection to spirit. This journey brought you the lake and a cave revered, honored, and cherished by its aboriginal people for its connection, nature, the nature spirits, the past, present, future, all at once to the spiral that is your journey. This will foster, imagine, create a journey asking you to slow down, listen, and learn. A journey of imagination and manifestation. Space to surrender. Surrender may ask you to do nothing, but it doesn't ask you to be nothing. Daydream, visualize, put your feet in the earth. What you imagine will become your belief. And soon you will see these things come to pass in the outer world. Look again toward the lake this journey brought you to. There with the Kava Kava lining your sweet lake stands ancestor after ancestor after ancestor after ancestor. Holding this little space with you. So I just channeled that journey story from water based on what the water element and water spirits brought in. And I wanted to also just say what I, this, for those that this will be helpful, I don't know how clear this came out in that story, but when I look at it from above and I step back for a moment, feel it's really important to make sure that it's also understood whether for some of you or all of you that chose the water journey of all the elements this is the one where i feel like the ancestors came in the most clearly the most forcefully in a beautiful way in a way of not necessarily to tell the journey's story but to let you know you are not alone, that whatever it is that you are moving through or journeying or whatever paths you're taking right now, you're moving with an energy that includes multiple layers of reality, multiple timelines, past, present, future. This journey is the most occurring within a spiral. Oh, the other three elements, like I think everything occurs in a spiral, but this one is m mostly dominated by spiral energy, meaning 
There are nature spirits, elemental spirits, planetary spirits, cosmic spirits, soul spirits galore, all up and over and in this journey. So whatever that means for you, discern that for you, for what that means, what that might be affirming or what other additional questions that might bring up for you. So I want to thank Water for bringing this energy in. I want to thank you for bringing your energy in. We're going to lead it here. As above, so below. As within, so without. As the universe, so the soul. So shall it be. So it is. Ashe. My energy stays with me. Your energy stays with you. Unfettered and infinite love and gratitude. This choose your own journey. Thick an element was designed using divination as the foundation, which meant I had a set number of story aspects that I wanted to include. I chose decks that I felt spiritually drawn to, to give fodder for those particular aspects. So each of the four elemental journeys include a reference to either an exact point of reference on Earth or some sort of geographical reference point. It could be a lake, cave, that kind of thing. And so I asked each element, where does this journey, this story occur? And used the deck Sacred Sites Oracle Cards Harness our Earth's spiritual energy to heal your past, transform your present, and shape your future. And that is Barbara Michael John III with Flavia Kate Peters. I also asked the elements, what is being sought in this story? Like folks who choose each of the elemental paths, what are they seeking? I wanted to know, you know, every great story has a crucible, right? What needs to be overcome? For that, I used Oracle of the Universe, Divine Guidance from the Cosmos by Stacey DeMarco. I asked what are key aspects of the folks choosing a particular elemental journey. For that, I used Anatomy of a Witch Oracle, Cards for the Body, Mind, and Spirit by Laura Tempest Zacroff. I wanted to know what is to be learned. And for that, I used the Wild Unknown Alchemy deck written and illustrated by Kim Kranz. I believe deeply that we're never on the journey alone. There's lots of different energy spirits that we can lean into that sort of hold space with us. And so I wanted to know for each journey, what ancestor energy would be supporting the listener. For that, I use Secrets of the Ancestors Oracle by Abiola Abrams. It's actually quickly becoming one of my all-time favorite Oracle decks. I'm big on deepening my relationship with the plants and herbs and flowers of, of our beautiful planet Earth. And so I also had a question of what healing energy is available to folks. For that, I use the Herbal Astrology Oracle by Adriana Ayales. I also asked for ideas on whatever is going on for folks on their journey, what ideas, tools, or concepts can they use to transmute the situation or the story. And for that, I drew three cards from my own Oracle deck called Transmuting the Eye. And then lastly, I asked for a closing card. The journey is winding down what would be really helpful for folks to know about the journey and could give us a nice close. For that, I used Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron reed I want to thank all the energies, all the guides, all the ancestors, all the spirits that showed up. And I want to thank these cards. I want to thank these authors and these illustrators for creating these decks. Thank you.